Yeah, so the, the interseeder came about um, from a project where we were harvesting corn stalks for a biofuel, and we were trying to replace the, the carbon loss with taking the crop off the field, the, the residue. And we were using uh, a rye cover crop to replace that soil carbon loss, and we weren't getting much growth. So that's typical of a lot of the northern areas where by the time the, the grain crop comes off, we just can't get the cover crop established. So we decided to design a machine that we could actually plant the cover crop earlier in the year, midsummer, and we could incorporate a couple, a couple other field operations at the same time and then and start the cover crop a lot earlier in the season. So the way we're set up, we're set up to operate in 30-inch corn rows or soybean rows. Um, we're also designed specifically for no-till uh, management. However, we can work in tilled ground. And basically what we are doing is we have the units configured to run within that, within the corn rows. So within those 30-inch rows, we run three tillage units and a double disc opener and a packing wheel that, you know, creates a seed trough, plants the, the cover crop, and then packs it in. In addition to that, in addition to planting the cover crop, we can also side dress the primary crop, the corn that's growing there, with a nitrogen fertilizer. And we, we're actually doing that in what we consider a precision application where it's four inches off the corn row. If the, if, the, if the conditions would get dry and the roots of the corn don't grow far, it's close enough to the corn that the corn can still utilize it. But it's also adjacent to our cover crop zone so that we're not burning the, the freshly seeded cover crop uh, plants with a, you know, a high fertilizer rate. So typically we're, we're planting the cover crop the same time that we'd be doing a side dress application. So usually the corn's knee tall, somewhere in the knee tall range. And what we hope to do is, is to get into those corn rows while they're still open enough that there's a lot of light penetration down into the row so we can get the cover crop germinated and get it started. But at the same time, we want that, that canopy to then close over as quick as possible. And then what we really want is we just want to see that cover crop emerge just hang out under the corn canopy while the corn grows through its season. Um, we're, our goal is to not impact corn yield. So really what we want to see is the cover crop trying to maintain itself under the corn canopy without taking any, anything away from the corn. And that's, well, in four years of research, that's what we've seen. We've, we've always found that we haven't had a negative impact on corn yield, and it's always the cover crop <clears throat> trying to survive under the corn canopy rather than the cover crop hurting the corn. Yeah, so usually for us here in Pennsylvania, um, by late August to the beginning of September, our corn starts to dry back somewhat. So we, we usually see the leaves at the bottom start to fall down and, and, and lean back into the plant. And, and as that goes up the plant and we get more light down into the inner row, that cover crop really comes alive and really takes off. And, and typically, the last few years in Pennsylvania, we've had droughts that have lasted from you know, 4th of July through August. And it's been a long dry period, but usually in the fall, we, we always pick up rains. And at the same time we get that light in there, typically we're getting rainfall. And our, our cover crop is established, and it really takes off and does well at that point. Yeah, so we're going to take our current design of the interseeder, and if you can imagine... Um, you know, we have three row units, we skip 15 inches, and we have three more row units. Where we've skipped that 15 inches for the corn row as we're running through the field, we're going to put a, a unit back in there that will fold up out of the way. So in June, when you want to go out and seed your cover crops, you can do that. But at the end of the season, if you want to plant your wheat, you can drop that row back down in and use it as a traditional grain drill. And you should be able to do anything from uh, something as small as a clover seed, uh, an alfalfa seed to your cereals in the fall to your soybeans in the spring. So rather than having a machine that you use two weeks out of the year, we're hoping you can use it two months out of the year.